Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Andrew Morgan. I'm chair of the Seventh Circuit JNC. We are here um, to in interviews. That that one. It's the public one. Like here, I can't see it. Yep. So we're conducting interviews for the uh, county court vacancy here. Uh, and you applied. Can you start by introducing yourself or reintroducing yourself to the commission and telling us uh, why you're qualified for this? Well, as I said last time, my name is Neil Kaufman. Uh, I've lived in Florida for nearly 20 years. I started life in uh, Georgia and then moved to Michigan when I was a small child. And when I was in Michigan, I went to law school there, ended up working at the Michigan Attorney General's office for a couple of years had the opportunity to practice uh, civil child abuse and neglect law uh, as an acting assistant attorney general when I was up there. And then moved down to Florida. I have some private practice up there and down here, but most of my life has been dedicated to public service. Uh, I've been in public service just here in Florida for about 17 years. And uh, my current position is as a child support enforcement hearing officer which kind of brings me to why I'd like to be a county judge. In addition to the fact that I feel it's the probably the next logical progression in my career, uh, I have made a career out of public service. I enjoy serving the public, um, and I think I would be very good at it. Um, the majority of what I do uh, right now is handling cases involving pro se litigants. Uh, in fact, I'm running across the hallway uh, today. Uh, did a full morning contempt docket. I'll be doing another one this afternoon. And um, all of the litigants this morning uh, who appeared, and many of them appeared via Zoom, a couple of them appeared in person, uh, were here on contempt uh, matters. Uh, a couple driver's license issues as well. But none of them were represented by counsel. That's experience that would carry over to the county court. And uh, I have, I don't want to toot my own horn here, but I guess that's why I'm here. So I. I uh, I think I've become very adept at dealing with pro se litigants. Uh, the key is giving everyone the opportunity to not only be heard, but also feel like they've been heard. Uh, and you have to do that without giving them anything extra. Uh, pro se litigants are subject to all of the same rules uh, that represented parties are. Uh, so you can do certain things like allow them to testify in the narrative, or you, know, you can explain procedures a little bit to them. But you know, uh, you can't advocate uh, for any pro se litigants. Uh, that's their job if they choose to represent themselves. And in county court, my understanding is an awful lot of them do choose to represent themselves. And that's experience that I would bring to the county court. Um, I'm open for any questions that uh, any of the members have. And, and thank you for this opportunity. I didn't say that at the beginning as I did last time, but I do appreciate the opportunity for an interview. What about um, Mr. Hoffman? Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, there, there's a little bit of a delay. So I just wanted to ask you just a few questions. Um, we mentioned that you have a pretty massive uh, docket. Can you tell us a little bit about how you have worked to be able to get that docket in a timely manner and get your report and recommendations in out? Yes. Uh, what I have done is I have become incredibly familiar with the, the body of law involving the kind of cases that I hear, and I generally rule from the bench. Um, I uh, hear the entire case, and with rare exception, uh, I reduce that to a report and recommendation live while I'm in court. Um, I, I use the benchmark uh, software to do that, as, as a lot of the judges do. and. Um, that I transmit those orders immediately uh, to the circuit judge uh, for consideration <coughs> and the entry. Obviously, if people disagree, they have 10 days to file a motion to vacate, which I also advise people of in every hearing. Uh, but you can do it rapidly and you can make good decisions as long as you do a complete reset after every single hearing. Because uh, obviously the last hearing has nothing to do with the next hearing. That's another skill I feel I would bring to county court. Um, Every case is different, even if there are similarities. You can't consider anything from the last case 
that you heard, or you can't consider anything in this case that you heard in the last case. So everything is a complete reset, and everybody still wants to and deserves to be heard. So when you start a new case, you give all the parties their opportunity <coughs> to be heard, you apply the evidence or the testimony presented to the laws that exist and govern whatever issue it is that you're hearing, and then you render a report and recommendation, or if you're a judge, you render an order. But uh, I would plan to uh, bring that skill uh, to the county bench if I were appointed. Tell us about your community service. It seems like you're, you've been involved in both team court and the Moose Lodge. Can you tell yes. us about some of those activities? Yes. I have been involved in the Moose, uh, Moose Lodge as well as team court. Uh, the Moose Lodge uh, supports mostly uh, Moose Heart and Moose Haven. Um, and um, Moose Heart is a uh, charity that they support. It's in, in another state, but it provides a, uh, actually no, Moose Heart is here. Sorry, got to mix that up. Moose Heart is here and it provides a uh, opportunity for seniors, especially if they have low income and they're members of the Moose, to be able to live decently in their, their elder years. Uh, Moose Haven is a charity up, uh, up north that provides a home for many children, and each state generally sponsors a house. Um, Teen Court is an awesome program. Uh, it provides an opportunity for kids who have made a little mistake, or in some cases a big mistake, to be able to have a judicial or quasi-judicial process, pay for their mistake in a way that doesn't wreck the rest of their lives, just to put it simply. Uh, it's, it's a type of diversion program in criminal cases, and um, it, it gives a lot of good kids who made a bad decision a second chance. So I do enjoy that as well. Um, I also have a lot of ties with the community as far as contacts I have made over the years. Uh, I've been on the other side of the courtroom from many lawyers who remain friends of mine, uh, even if they were on the other side of the courtroom and I was advocating against them. I'm a strong believer that the practice of law is a collegial thing and that uh, while it is necessarily an adversarial process, that doesn't mean the other side is really the enemy. I mean, you can uh, fight as hard as you can in court, make your case, uh, get the ruling from the court, maybe you'll appeal it, maybe you won't, but at the end of the day you can still be friends with the people on the other side. I think that's important. Which of the uh, Mr. Coffey, can I follow up on something that Raven asked? The on average, yes, sir. how many cases are you hearing per month? Right now, it's hovering around 250. Uh, it varies between 200 and 350 generally. Uh, sometimes it can go above that, and it can go up to 400. Uh, but uh, go ahead. So I don't want to cut you off. Please finish your answer. Well, it, can, it can go above that, but generally it's about 250 lately. Um, some are Zoom, okay. some are regular. Okay. And on average, uh, how many orders are you getting out before? The same number, roughly. And can you just talk to us a little bit about your approach to uh, keeping control of uh, and running a, a busy courtroom that's full of pro se litigants, uh, milling about, talking, wanting to get out of there, and you just Talk to us how you go about keeping control of it. Sure. Uh, when you come into the courtroom, uh, you have to present uh, an error that you are in command of the courtroom. And uh, it's important that the people who are in the courtroom understand that every case is here to be heard. And sometimes I do end up with unruly people in courtroom. Uh, you know, I, hopefully you don't need the bailiff to get involved. And usually the bailiff doesn't need to get involved because usually I can just explain to them uh, what's going on and that their case will be called in due course and that they need to provide the parties who are being heard with an opportunity to be heard without interrupting and it's usually not a not a serious problem. It's all about how you present yourself and how you let everyone in court know that this is a serious process and this is not a time to fool around. <coughs> when you would go to the judicial, uh, Florida Judicial College, was there a particular course that you just, when you left it, you said to yourself, okay, I really learned something there. I really, that, that, that influences me going forward. You're probably going to laugh when I tell you what class it was, uh, but it was actually a class called Combating 
compassion fatigue. And basically, huh. it was it centered around the uh, psychological aspects for a judge hearing cases and how it's important to remember that every person who comes into the courtroom, to them, their case is the most important case in the world. And it's very important not to become jaded or, or uh, I've heard that before, because you know, the fifth time you hear it, it might actually be the truth. I mean, you can't, you can't prejudge any case that you're hearing in a courtroom. And I knew that going in, but the, the course was, was really good at reinforcing that idea. And it also provided some skills that, uh, you know, help one maintain a good sense of humor, uh, which I always try and do. I've been doing this for 13 years, so I, I, think, uh, I think I've got that pretty well down. And again, that's a skill I would bring to the county bench. How are you, if you are lucky enough to be selected, um, how are you going to handle being in a new area? Because I, you know, and this happens in my practice where I get so comfortable at one thing that going to another area, you know, is a real challenge. Maybe more so than it was even when I was a younger lawyer. So you could be put in a position where you're going to have county civil cases which are different. You know, landlord tenant and small claims and all those things. So how do you handle that? You study, and I would look forward to it. Um, I've never been afraid of a challenge. I like a new challenge. Uh, when I took this job, I mean, I, I had some ancillary contact with child support, uh, and I had practiced family law in the past, but, you know, child support wasn't my main thing, obviously working for the Department of Children and Families. Prosecuting civil child abuse and neglect cases. So um, I had to learn a lot of things. I mean, a lot of it I already knew or knew in the abstract or had looked it up before, but uh, I, I learned it. And, you know, there's a learning curve with any new job. And I respect that and I will look forward to it. I think another big part of it is seeking the knowledge of those who have already been there. I did that when I accepted this position, and I would do that again uh, with regard to uh, the county court. I did take the opportunity to observe some county court proceedings, and um, I am I'm comfortable that, of course, there will be a learning curve, but I'm comfortable that I can handle it. What about elections? That's, a, that's, that's an excellent question. question. <laughs> that is an excellent question, and, and if I were selected, if I were lucky enough to be set up and super lucky enough to be selected and appointed by the governor uh, to this position, I would plan to vigorously defend this position. Um, I don't have extensive experience with elections, I'll say that up front. I mean, I, I, I've run for election to my uh, condominium <coughs> association several times and, and I haven't lost yet, but at the same time I understand that's not the same thing. And I would definitely be seeking the guidance of a professional campaign manager uh, if I were challenged, and I expect to be challenged uh, if I were appointed to this position. Um, I'm not afraid of it. I don't mind the public speaking. Obviously, I do that all day. Um, and and uh, I would look forward to it. I mean, obviously, you know, you, I don't guess you ever hope that someone challenges you, but you expect it these days. Uh, you know, you know that's going to happen. And I have enough respect for this process and for the position and for the honor that I would feel holding the position, that I would I would vigorously defend it. Would you sell your Mustang to help uh, do that? It's a '95 Mustang you have. I do have I do have a '95 <laughs> Mustang, and if I needed to, I, I, I would. But I was I'm just trying to find where your heart really was. <laughs> <laughs> I would really try to love that car. Been, that car's been with me a very long time, but it's it's kind of a collection. It's a GTS actually. They only made a few hundred of those in yellow. In yellow? Yes. Least Obviously, that's not my At least it wasn't that green. Right? It wasn't the green. <laughs> now, my daily driver is a Camry. But, uh, yeah. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Um, thanks for coming in. Uh, is the best number going to be to reach you and in? Six five? Yes. Great. Yes. So we will uh, call you at some point today.
All right. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, and, and thank you all for listening to me. I, I know you do this all day long, and I appreciate your time as well. Thank you. Thank you.